Welcome to the fourth in our Pixhawk series. In this video, we're going to talk about the flight modes. So in the first video, we set up the board, and the second video, we actually installed it into the craft and did our first flight. And the third video, we talked about how to set up a Tronus radio so that you can access all six of the flight modes. This video is the one where we're going to talk about what those flight modes are and how they work at a very high level. Now there's a great resource on the web already that you can use called ardupilot.com and on that site there's an amazing area which covers all of the different flight modes and talks about the ones that recommend to start in and how they all work. Now the link here on the bottom of the screen is one that I'll put in the description so you can go straight there. If you'd like to know more about any of the modes that we're talking about you can go onto the mode area on ardupilot.com and get all of the information. The information is changing all the time. So we're recording this in early July 2015. And so always make sure that you're going and checking the site in case something's changing because the firmware is being updated all the time. For those of you that have come to the Pixhawk from the APM series, which are already on the channel, a lot of the information we're about to go through, you've already seen. So the slideware and the graphics and some of the things I'm going to talk about are stuff that you've probably already heard. So if you've already watched the APM flight mode videos, you've pretty much seen everything you're going to see in here. The way we're going to do this is actually go through each of these modes in turn. Stabilize, altitude hold, loiter, return to launch, auto, acro, sport, drift, guided, circle position, land and follow me. And we'll go through those in turn in the slides. We'll cover the main features of each of the modes and we'll talk a little bit about some of the parameters that you can change within Mission Planner if you want to tweak how they run. But the very first thing we'll do is actually split those modes into two lists, the ones that need a GPS lock to function and the ones that don't. So the ones that need a GPS lock are loiter, return to launch and auto, which is auto is how the craft flies autonomously using the waypoints programmed into it via mission planner. So you'd expect GPS to run for that, but also things like drift, guided, circle, position, land and follow me all require a solid GPS lock to function as well. The ones that don't are stabilize, altitude hold, acro or acrobatic, sport flying mode and land. In the middle, there's also two other boxes that you'll see when you're looking at the modes on Mission Planner called Simple and Super Simple. Those are modes where you can tell the flight controller that you want it to behave as though the tail of the craft is pointing to you at all time. So it actually takes away some of the challenges that you may have as a pilot trying to hover without the tail pointing directly at you. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of these modes. I would recommend that you don't use them to learn to fly. Learning to fly in all orientations is just one of those things you've got to get over as a pilot. If you can't do flying in all orientations, then you're more likely to get into trouble and cause damage to something or somebody. But what super and what simple and super simple are useful for is for those instances where maybe the craft is far away from you and uh, you start to lose orientation, it's handy having a mode potentially that you can flick into that has either simple or super simple enabled so that irrespective of the way the craft is pointing, you can bring it back to you safely. That's a nice feature if you want to recover the craft and you're getting into trouble. Next thing we'll talk about then is what you need to have as a mode in order to arm the craft. So there's only four modes really that you should be considering to arm the craft in. There are Stabilize, Altitude Hold, Acro and Loiter. Uh, Loiter obviously needs a GPS lock and I would always recommend with a Pixhawk that you wait until that GPS lock is solid before you fly anyway. Otherwise modes like Return to Launch and some of the others won't work. So I would say as we talked about, Stabilize is a great mode to have as the first mode on the mode switch on your transmitter. It's a great one to start off in and to do the initial flying around and to test everything's working. So let's go through each of the modes in turn and we'll start with our friend Stabilize. So Stabilize, as we've said, doesn't need a GPS lock. It's essentially just an auto level function. It uh, will still be pushed around by wind because it isn't relying on GPS to maintain its position. It's just feeling the tilt of the craft and correcting for that automatically. Height is managed by you as a pilot, so it's all down to you and the throttle to keep it at the height that you want. And it's a great mode to start in. As I said, I would always recommend this is the first one on your switch. 
If you want to look at more about it, you can obviously go to copter.ardupilot.com slash wiki slash stabilize hyphen mode. So stabilize is auto level. The next mode then is altitude hold. Now altitude hold can be turned on with other modes and what altitude hold does is it uses the barometer to maintain its height. So this is quite nice to have alt stabilize and altitude hold turned on together and that means then that you can fly around and you can maintain the height using the throttle. Be aware though that the throttle behaves very differently with altitude hold. So rather than being directly connected to the power of the engines on the craft, it's actually using uh, a dead band in the middle to decide how high or low you want it to be. So the way to think about it is, is if the throttle's between 40 and 60%, that's telling the Pixhawk to keep the craft at the height that it's at. If it goes above 60%, then that's saying to the Pixhawk that you want the model to climb. If it drops below 40%, then that throttle value is telling the Pixhawk that you want it to fall. This confuses some pilots because it starts to feel like the throttle is very unresponsive. It's because the throttle is being used in a very different way if you have altitude hold turned on. The speed of change vertically, you change by altering the pilot underscore velocity z underscore max parameter. So loiter is the next one. Loiter is one that does use the GPS as we've talked about. It maintains its current position in the sky using the GPS coordinates. So it's like locking the craft into a particular place. Now it won't stay perfectly still. It'll do its very best to do it, but you might get a very slight amount of wandering as it compensates for wind um, and other bits and pieces. You control the position, so you move it around using the elevator and aileron and rudder, and then when you let go of those controls, then that GPS set of coordinates is the one that the craft will use when you let go of the sticks to keep it in that position. It does maintain its old altitude in loiter. It's the same as altitude hold mode, so it will try and keep its height. Uh, you can arm in this mode, it's one of the few GPS modes that you can actually arm the craft in and there are separate loiter PIDs in Mission Planner. There's a special version of this we can talk about um, but we're not going to talk about it in this list. It's called OF loiter or optical flow loiter and that's where you have a little camera that's pointing down the ground and it uses the image to maintain its position as well, similar to the way that an optical mouse does on a mouse pad. So this is a nice one if you want to fly around and you want to get it into a particular position and then basically tell the craft you want it to stay there and then maybe want to look around using your head tracker with your FPV goggles. Well, this is a great way to do it. You can park it in the sky. Return to launch is the next one. This is a fantastic mode. This is the mode I would recommend that you set up one of your fail safes to be. When you initiate return to launch, the craft will stop in the air. It will climb to a predetermined height. And then once it's at that height, it will then fly directly straight back to the coordinates that are stored for home. Now those home coordinates are typically the coordinates that are stored when you armed the board. So wherever it is on the flight line or in the field where you initiated and armed your Pixhawk before you took off, that's the point that it's coming back to. Not only will it fly back to that point, but when it's over that point, it will then gently descend until it senses that it's touched the ground. And as soon as it's touching the ground, it will actually turn off the motors and stop them spinning. Fan fantastic little mode. This is one of the things that I love about the APM and Mission Planner flight controllers. Having a switch on your transmitter that will turn on return to launch or having it as the top mode that you can just flick into when you get into trouble is worth its weight in gold. This has saved my bacon a couple of times when the craft has started to um, go a bit too far or I've lost orientation completely. I'll tend to flick it into return to launch, bring it back, and then when it is in visual range, click it back into stabilize or crow or whatever other mode that I was flying in originally and carry on the flight. Next mode then is auto. This is a really great mode too. This is where you can actually upload waypoints into the flight controller and with different commands. And then when you flick it into auto, the flight controller will then fly those waypoints one after the other, like a little program. So you could have it flying to one end of the field, flying over a point of interest and then circling around it, flying to another waypoint, um, waiting there and then circling around, then coming back and eventually doing a return to launch or coming back to the start position and landing. 
very, very powerful, and people use this kind of mode to do things like aerial mapping with a camera slung under the craft. Thing you need to do when you're setting up the mission though is you need to make sure that land or return to launch are the last commands in a mission. We will cover mission planning later on in the series, but just for now, just make sure that land or RTL are always at the bottom of the list. That way it always flies back to you. Acro or Acrobatic, um, this is a nice one. The model maintains its attitude. It's kind of like a self-level, but it's not as aggressive to stabilize. The throttle is completely manual, so it's directly connected to how much power the motors are putting out. It requires constant control input, so you do need to work harder with Acro, but it does mean you have a closer control over how the craft is flying, so you can fly more aggressively. There is an Acro Trainer mode in version 3.1 and later of the firmware, and that's quite handy because Acro is one of the hardest modes to fly, and using the Trainer mode can be good to just help you get to grips with it. Next one is Sport. So Sport is kind of rate controlled stabilised plus altitude holds. So this is kind of a bit of an amalgam of a couple of the other modes. So it does retain its attitude. It will not lean more than 45 degrees, so you can't flip the model over or be too aggressive on the sticks. Height is managed automatically, but it's nice for doing things like FPV and filming. Because what it means is that you can push the craft over and have the craft going at a particular direction in a particular maintained speed and it will actually maintain that speed as it goes along and just allow for lovely video. If you're interested in doing FPV and filming, Sport could be one for you. Next one is called Drift. Uh, drift is a nice mode. It allows for plane-like turns. So when you actually move the elevator and aileron, the yaw is automatically managed by the controller. So it will turn the back round. So for those of you that are plane pilots that are coming to multi-copters or thinking of using Pixhawk on multi-copters, then you'll be used to being doing lazy aileron-only turns. This allows you to do that with a multi-copter. Again, manual throttle control and allows for you controlling the model with just the elevator and aileron stick and flying it around. For me, this one is a bit weird because I've got used to managing my rudder as part of the turn. I only ever use non-rudder turns when I'm being lazy flying planes or wings. So guided, this is one where you're actually controlling the craft by clicking on the map in Mission Planner and maintaining a connection to the craft using something like the Mavlink radios. And what you can do is click on the map in Mission Planner and send those commands directly over the radio to the craft and the craft will then go to that point or execute that command. So if you have your radios connected, you have your Mavlink connected and you want to sit and click on a window rather than control the craft directly, then pop it into guided mode and control and fly it by clicking on a map in Mission Planner. Circle is a mode where it goes around in a big circle. Nice thing about this though is it tends to keep its nose pointing towards the centre of the circle. So this is handy if you want to get some aerial shots of a particular point of interest. You can set the point of interest in Mission Planner as a particular point and tell it that you want to circle around a certain number of times. You can set the circle radius in Mission Planner so you can figure how far away you want it to be and if you wanted to make the craft turn on the spot you just set the radius as zero. In Mission Planner if you want to do that what you need to do is actually execute the command loiter underscore turns and tell it how many turns that you want clockwise or anti-clockwise. Position is the next one. It's identical to Loiter that we've already talked about, but it gives you manual throttle control. So whereas with Loiter, if you remember, it's like parking it in the sky. This one, it just manages its position in the sky, but allows you to control the height more directly. Last two, and then I'll land. Guess what? It lands the model. If it executes the land, it actually descends to 10 meters using the regular altitude hold mode is actually what it's doing and then below 10 meters it actually descends at a rate set by a parameter called land underscore speed defaults about 50 centimeters a second when it has touched the ground it also shuts down the motors and disarms this is the end of a return to launch sequence it can actually land the craft far nicer than i can and it's a nice cute way to finish a automatic flight Land isn't a mode that you fly in, land is just a way to tell the craft that you've come to the end of your flight and you want it to safely, carefully land itself on the ground. The last mode then 
is follow me. So follow me is a bit of a weird one. I'm not a fan of this at all. I've just had a conversation with a subscriber about this very thing. It works very similarly to guided mode. So in guided mode, that's the one where it's connected to mission planner. And by clicking on a map, it sends those GPS coordinates to the craft and the craft will then fly to those GPS coordinates and maintain that position. The way follow me works is it's connected to the device that you have in your hand and it's constantly looking at the GPS coordinates of that device and maintaining its position to match those coordinates. So you might see videos on YouTube where the people wandering around a field and above their head, 30, 40 feet above them, there's a multicopter which is actually keeping position directly above them. You can use Mavlink for this, we're using the radios, um, just like you would with a guided mode and mission planner, but you can also use things like Android tablets and use things like Bluetooth as well. Not sure how safe this is. I have seen too many multicopters let go because of a failure of a component or a prop just giving up from old age and dropping out of the sky. I definitely don't want to be under one of them when it comes down because I'm actually telling it that it needs to fly above my head. So those are the modes. That's a very quick whistle stop tour of how they work. I would always recommend starting off in stabilize, having return to launch as the other mode that you fly in and that means it can come back to you and you can play with the others as well. I tend to find, depending on what you're doing with the craft, some are more useful than others. And again, if you want to set up all six modes using something like a Tyrannus radio, look at the previous video, the third one in the series, that talks about the process to set it up either on a six position rotating switch or by mixing two switches together to give you those six positions. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.